I cause uh, admiratio populi if I take my mask off when I get into the sanctuary? Oh, yes, of course. Okay. I, I don't. So it's in the pool. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Before we begin Mass this, night, this evening, I'd like to welcome back to this House of Formation one of our former rectors, Monsignor Francis Kelly, senior priest of the Diocese of Worcester. He was the sixth rector here and did a wonderful job. And Francis, it's great to have you home, and I hope you feel Welcome, because you, you certainly are, and we are very grateful to you for all that you've done for this institution and for those of us on, uh, who have been involved in formation work. Tonight we begin the um, observation of the 24 hours for life here in the seminary, and we're delighted to have with us Bishop Robert McManus, the Bishop of Worcester. Bishop McManus is a champion of, of pro-life activities in the United States, his ministry has been one of clarity, of love, and conviction. And uh, he is certainly one of the most stalwart defenders of life in, this, uh, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and in the church in the United States. Bishop, it is a great joy and a privilege to have you with us tonight. I thank you for taking time to be with us. And most of all, we thank you for the leadership that you exhibit and, you've, and the service that you render to the church and to us in particular. So welcome, Bishop Monsignor. Thank you. My dear brothers, at the beginning of this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Let us pray. O God, who made St. Thomas Aquinas outstanding in his zeal for holiness and his study of sacred doctrine, grant us, we pray, that we may understand what he taught and imitate what he accomplished. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since through the blood of Jesus, we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way he opened for us through the veil, that is, his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with sincere hearts and in absolute trust, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope, and he who made the promise is trustworthy. We must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works we should not stay away from our assembly, as is the custom of some, but encourage one another. And this all the more as you see the day drawing near. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people who loves to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, Lord, this this is is the the people people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks for the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. gospel really and well in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Is a lamp brought in to be placed under a bushel basket or under a bed, and not to be placed on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden 
except to be made visible. Nothing is secret except to come to light. Anyone who has ears to hear ought to hear. He also told them, Take care what you hear. The measure which you measure will be measured out to you, and still more will be given to you. To the one who has, more will be given. From the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Gene Kelly, Father Kylie, my brother priest, dear seminarians, friends all. Let us hold firmly to our confession that gives us hope. For we who made the promise, he who made the promise is trustworthy. We must consider how to arouse one another to love and good works. These words taken from today's first liturgical reading from the letter to the Hebrews could well serve as the theological foundation and inspiration for the pro-life movement in the United States of America. For the last 48 years, since the tragic and profoundly immoral Supreme Court decision of Roe v. Wade, the Catholic Church in the United States has been in the forefront of the pro-life movement, which, I believe, is the preeminent civil rights issue of our time. For those of us who have marched in Washington and walked shoulder and shoulder with thousands and thousands of people, many, as you know, are quite young. This demonstration for the legal protection of innocent life in the womb has been a source of profound hope, profound hope for many Americans, both Catholics and non-Catholics alike. But what is that hope? It is simply that our unswervering dedication to supporting the sanctity of human life from conception to natural death will prevail because our Catholic faith, rooted and anchored in the Lord Jesus and his gospel of life, teaches us that truth, that love is stronger than hate, that goodness and truth will ultimately triumph over evil and deception and that for those who love God, everything works together for the good. In this evening's gospel text, Jesus tells his disciples, and therefore us, that a lamp is not to be placed under a bushel basket, but rather placed on a lampstand so that its light can brighten the entire household. Through our baptism into Christ, the light of the world, we have received the light of faith that we must allow to illuminate our vocation to be what Pope Francis repeatedly refers to as missionary disciples. You, my dear seminarians, are here at Pope St. John the 23rd Seminary to allow your seminary formation to mold you into the priest of the new evangelization. That is to say, priests who are on fire with the desire to shed the brilliant life of the church's gospel of life on a world that's sad to say, all too often, prefers the darkness of moral relativism to the light of divine revelation and the perennial wisdom of the natural moral law. I often tell my priests in the diocese that even their parishioners who attend mass regularly are far more American than they are Catholic. One might even say that so many of our American Catholics have been duped by the lies and fabrications of the pro-abortion forces in our country, and they are strong. 
very strong, very determined, very well financed. But you see, my friends, the erroneous justification of legalized abortion is rooted in a gravely flawed understanding of what it means to be human. If you seriously study your courses in moral theology and biomedical ethics, it will soon become apparent to you, I hope, that the thread that links the moral and neuralgic issues of our times, issues from abortion to same-sex marriage, to so-called transgender rights to euthanasia, all these issues are tied together by a profoundly mistaken anthropology that champions a radical personal autonomy that ultimately is destructive of the common good and the public morality of a civil society. And during these summer months, and just recently at the Capitol, we have seen how violence begets violence. As a bishop of the church, I exhort you, seminarians, and soon, please God, my brother priest, to use this time of seminary formation to prepare yourself spiritually, theologically, and pastorally so as to be able to counter in a intelligent and charitable way these anthropological and moral errors which threaten not only the unity of the church but the salvation of souls. During his homily at his mass of installation as Bishop of Rome and Universal Pastor of the Church, the late and much beloved St. John Paul II proclaimed boldly to the massive crowd gathered in St. Peter's Square into the world. He said these words, and some of you I'm sure remember. Be not afraid, and open the doors of your heart to Christ. May these spiritually provocative words inform our lives as priests dedicated to building a culture of life and love in our parishes for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. Amen. God bless you. gathered in prayer and standing before the presence of the living God, we offer to him our prayers and petitions, not only for ourselves, not only for this community, but for the entire church. For the church, Pope Francis and all her shepherds, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they may bear witness to the light and love of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this nation, our president, and all government officials, that the Holy Spirit guide and inform their consciences and the consciences of all people to protect the dignity and lives of all persons from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those wounded by the act of abortion, that they may receive healing and consolation through the wounds of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved dead and all who have died through abortion, that they may attain their eternal life in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and for the increased enrollment in our own seminary community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers in our book of intentions, and those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we stand before you this evening with open hands and with open hearts. We ask you to flood our hearts with the gift of your Holy Spirit and to fill our hands with the bread of life, who is Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who is you and the Holy Spirit. Live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and the river human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless the you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and the river human hands will become our spiritual drink. Bless the you, God of all creation. humble spirit and contrite heart be accepted by your Lord. May our sacrifice at this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on this feast day of blessed Thomas Aquinas be pleasing to you, O God. For taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the the festival of St. Thomas Aquinas, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the preaching, the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise 
as without end we acclaim. comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may, we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the 23rd, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all, all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, the bishop of this local church, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Father, and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death gave life to the world. I believe by this most holy part and blood from my sins, and your faith, your commandments, and we part it from you. Behold the Lamb of God, and behold he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Corpus Christi, custodia. the body of Christ. body of Christ. The 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 
body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of blessed Thomas Aquinas, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen.
Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take that. Thank you very much.